Hello, I'm going to talk you through the Wilcoxon sign ranks test. So we've got a scenario here. We've got some psychologists interested in knowing whether a group of students' ability to memorise words was because of the ear that they heard uh, the words in during a listening task. So, for example, they've got an audio recording of a list of words and they're randomly presenting words to either the left or the right ear. And participants have two sets of scores for the words that they've remembered correctly, one from the left ear and one from the right ear. They've calculated the mean and standard deviation and found that it was positively skewed, so it's not a normally distributed uh, set of results, which means that a non-parametric test is most appropriate to use. And because we've got kind of a participant and we're looking at both the left and the right ear, they're participating in both levels of the IV, so it's repeated measures designed. We're also looking at a difference between them, so looking at a difference between the left ear and the right ear. We're also um, using interval ratio data because the, the scores, how many words were remembered. Now, the first step that you do with this, this test is to calculate the difference between the first condition and the second condition. So you basically just do um, 5 take away 33 and you get minus 28. Uh, 10 take away 26 which is minus 16. Uh, 31 take away 32 which is minus 1. 20 take away 32 minus 12. Um, 32 take away 32 is 0, 27 take away 30 is minus 3, 25 take away 7 is 18, 27 take away 20 is 7, and 15 take away 10 is 5. And once you've done that, you need to rank the difference column in order. So rank the difference. Now when you're ranking them, you ignore the minus signs. So pretend like the minus signs aren't there. Any that are zero, you ignore. And then you'll start at one. So ignoring the minus sign, the minus sign's not there for this ranking. So that's the first one. And the next number would be three. So that would be given a two. And the next one would be five. So that would be given a three. The next one is seven. So that would be four. The next one is 12, so that would be 5. The next one is 16, so that's 6. 18 is 7. And 20, minus 28, well, it's just 28, is 8. Now, what you do is you have a look at this column here and you count up how many negatives there are and how many positives there are. Now, negative numbers, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and positive numbers there are one two three so these three here are positive numbers now what you do is you use these ranks here and you add them together so we do seven plus four plus three equals 14. yeah that's right so 14. so 14 is our observed value so our wilcoxon Okay, we'll just do Wilcox and observe value uh, is 14. Now, obviously, we don't just leave it there because we need to calculate the critical value to compare it. Um, and how we do that is look at this table here. So, n is the number of differences. So, when we have a look at this, we've got nine participants, but we've only actually got eight differences because one of them is an ignore. So there's eight that are actually different from each other. So we look at eight there and we use 0 0.05 because generally in psychology, you know, we say that our results have to be 95% accurate and only 5% or less than 5% due to chance. Because, you know, there might be some kind of extraneous variables which are a bit different. So we kind of accept that. Obviously, if it's something really serious, like a suicide programme, we want to know the effectiveness of it. We probably use a 0 0.01 um, significance level so that then there's only a 1% chance that our findings aren't accurate um, but a 0.05 is generally what we use so our critical value therefore is 4 so our critical value is 4 because our n is 8 because 1 was ignore and no difference so we've got observed value of 14 and we've got a critical value of 4 so the final thing is if the observed value is less than the critical value, 
it is significant. So our observed value is actually greater than our critical value. So therefore, it is not significant. There is no significant difference between the words remembered in the left ear and the words remembered in the right ear. I hope that's been helpful. If you've got any questions, just let me know.